Hey everybody, it's Luke here from Luke's Power Art. Great to have you here for another episode of learning how to draw like our comic book heroes. Um, this week, we're going to be looking at Stephen Platt once again, and we're going to be looking at, as you can see on the screen, how to draw faces like Stephen Platt. Uh, on another note, guys, we've gone over the 100 subscriber point, so thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed. Um, it's very humbling. It's great that so many people are, are watching these videos now. Um, if you have any ideas, any comments, please put them down in the comments below um, for future videos, um, how you think it's going. It's always good to get constructive feedback and to get some ideas for future episodes. Now, for those of you who are Rob Liefeld fans, I was listening to uh, Rob Servations. Rob's podcast uh, that I love and that is uh, transforming the world, it seems, um, for the better. Uh, and I was listening to that just last week and he was talking about this idea of macho, bringing back the macho into comic books. And it took me back to a issue of Wizard Magazine from, I think, 1994. I think it was issue 35 where uh, they interviewed Rob and Stephen Platt together about profit, because this was where Stephen was about to jump in for the first time to draw profit. And what I remember about this was the cover. The cover was this amazing image of profit firing a gun with thousands of shells alongside Kirby, alongside Bad Rock, alongside Chapel. In the editorial, it said, profit is so macho, the guy couldn't wear a shirt if he tried. And so as we're doing this now, I want you to know that these proportions of these faces, they're macho faces, all right? If you wanna learn how to draw a normal proportioned face, go and look up any kind of how to draw sort of book, art book, whatever it might be. But right now, we're gonna look at how to draw macho faces because that's what Stephen Platt does best. So let's scroll through some faces here. Right here, you can see you've got Kirby over here. You've got a very nice chiseled outline of the face here. And you've got, Stephen does very big lips and very big muscles under the lips. You can see this massive lower lip here on profit. Um, and over here, you can see the same with Kirby. Uh, very chiseled, everything is chiseled. The neck is massive, the head is a little bit smaller than it should be, but that's to show how muscular the character is. The hair is awesome, it's sort of a bit more semi-Rob Liefeld, semi-Jim Lee hair going on up there. Uh, and Prophet over here looking very stoic, with very small noses, the very small noses, big lips, small eyes, these are all things we'll talk through but I just want to familiarize you with the faces that Stephen has drawn because some of you may not be as familiar as others. Here's a drawing of one of the disciples. These are sort of cybernetic warriors that Prophet fights. This is where Prophet and Kirby are having a standoff and they're about to shoot each other. This has got to be one of my favorite drawings Stephen Platt has ever done. It's the first page of Prophet 5, the first full issue of Prophet Stephen drew. Uh, so these cables coming off and there's a, there's a real awesome kind of crossover here between traditional Western art and Japanese manga. A normal face might look something like this. These sort of proportions, something along those lines, ears, neck would be something like that. You'd have your eyes there, eyebrows, some kind of a nose, bit of a manga nose there for you. Something along those lines would be a pretty standard face structure. What Stephen tends to do is he tends to widen things. Okay, so he will have a jawline that quite often can look like this, right? And he kind of squishes the head a bit, right? So he might have a, like that. Some kind of a shape 
like that. Okay. Um, so remember when you're drawing Stephen Platt type faces to widen that jawline. Now he doesn't do it with every character. Some characters he keeps more of a standard sort of perspective, but he still is making it more macho to use that word of Rob Liefeld's um, than your standard face. So if you can look at this picture of Prophet here, he has the what I'll call the Shadow Star mask on, which is basically two C's facing each other. Quite triangular eyes, like that. And you'll notice between the eye space is actually quite large. There's almost two eyes there. Standard proportions would say, if I'm drawing an eye, if I have an eye here, there should be an eye here, and there should be an eye here. So if that was your eyes, that middle eye would be the distance between the two eyes. Whereas Stephen tends to draw like that, where he could almost fit one and a half or even sometimes two eyes between. And you can see this here, the distance here is massive. Okay, so remember that he, he breaks that rule and makes a bigger distance because he generally draws quite small eyes, uh, probably to make the character look more menacing. Okay, so if you're drawing Stephen Platt's eyes, they're gonna look more like this. That one, uh, probably like that. I might have exaggerated a little bit there, but that's what you're looking for. And that's why, if you notice, he does a lot of this eyebrow stuff, like this stuff up here, the crease marks. It's why you can get so many in there. He is just massive of crease masks. Masks, marks. We've all got masks on our brains, I guess. Let's look back at this picture here. You can see how far those eyes are apart. Tiny little eye there. He's actually got one, two, three, four, almost five eyes. That's the most I've ever seen. That's actually quite phenomenal. I didn't even realize that until I just looked at it now. He's got five eye spaces between two eyes and it still looks cool. So there you go. You can bend the rules, you can break the rules as long as you know the rules. If you notice these little lines here, let me get the red. These lines here, these, you know, if you, if you go to the mirror and you frown, you'll notice these lines between your eyes and above your nose. This is how you can fit so many. So if you're trying to fit these in and you're doing normal eye proportions, it's not gonna look right, it's gonna look weird. And you notice his eye shape is either very triangular, so like this, or it's quite very small and it's a seed like, like that. So if we do this, you can actually say, there's a small eye there, there's a very small eye there. All right, we might do some eyebrow action, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then he does these lines that crease in like this. All right. There's other artists that do this, but he would be the guy who pushes it to the extreme. And then he kind of does his standard rendering. So he'll do the black point line here where the light can't really get to. And then he'll do the under lighting there. And then he'll do some kind of mass lighting like that. I probably should shift it back. So you can see what I'm doing there. You see that? And he, and he continues these lines up. They go all the way up like that. And he will do lots of these lines, but then he'll also do cross hatching in each individual section. like that, and sometimes you'll even do massive black areas. Like that, and then he would build up into a light area again above that. And you would see he would 
put these creases here, like the creases in the jacket, the creases in the nose. If you need to learn about those, go look in the mirror. That's uh, what most artists do. You'll see how these creases work. But you'll also see he likes to blacken under the eyes to make the character look more menacing. Over here, he does the, the line work above the eye. So I'll do that. And he does kind of create the underlid with a bit of black under there, a bit of black on the edge. And then he will do a certain amount of vertical lines. But then he'll do under lighting too. So if you're busy, I wouldn't attempt to draw a Stephen Platt face because there's so much detail you need to spend time on it. And then it comes down into a this sort of a nose. This is the shape his noses usually are. This is kind of a Jim Lee sort of nose. Uh, if I was to categorize it, if such a thing exists. This is the kind of nose you would have seen on Wolverine when Jim was on Wolverine. Uh, well, X-Men, I should say. And then you get a lot of broken lines. So instead of doing that, Stephen will do little broken lines, some bigger than others. And he'll usually do some kind of big shadow there. Now, see, I'm not going to complete this now. But see how that's taking shape? Okay. The lips we should probably talk about because I mentioned them a bit. So usually you'd have a lip there like that. And that's the huge lips there. And then he'll do standard sort of black point through there and then you'll get and then you'll get this sort of thing going on which is above towards the light source and this obviously will come down here this is something Jim Lee did very effectively when he drew Wolverine with his mask off and maybe even going down to there. See how that's starting to take shape now? Just apply the principles, understand them. If you don't understand this rendering techniques, go and check out some of the other videos on rendering techniques. What you're sort of doing with this nose, just to take a bit of time, would be to just go like that, that, and then maybe, just looking at it there, it might even be a bit longer like that. And then basically draw something like in there and bring down with some of the stippling, some of the lines off to the side. Probably gonna blacken that out. Bring in some darkness there. And you can start to see that's taking shape. So you can sort of see here in the side of the face here, coming up in the face here, let me use the red pen here, down here underneath his mask, here on his lips. Stephen tends to draw these sort of very dark pressed in uh, weathered looking faces. What Stephen does is that he will look at crease lines. So there's sort of the under lid here. He'll put that in place. Let me zoom in a bit. And then there's a line that comes up into here, line that goes down like that. There are lines that go down to the cheek because these crow's feet as you get older, it looks like a crow stomped your face but they're just wrinkles that are occurring. You get these sort of lines here, which create a crease down here and the tension in this point here, which creates that. And then you end up with 
sort of your nose like that. It's got an edge like that. But with all these things here, he will do that typical shading of Stevens. And then he'll do each section Then you have the line work under here. Let's remember how he does that thing like that. That would be a nose shadow, that thing. I apologize if I keep saying that thing like that. Once again, I won't go through all of it, but he applies that principle, the principle, if you're looking at a shoulder muscle, the principle of creating the dark point where the light can't get to, if the light in this case was coming from above, you would have sort of like the rendering back up into the light here, the light source being up here, and then you'd have underlighting where there's a fainter light source coming from down there. And he applies this principle to faces so that this cheek, which is curved, the light would be coming down from here. So he does this build up of lines to create a white point in there and then a black point under there and then the underlighting coming from under there. I'll just do that in red for you, a bit easy to see. So the underlighting comes there, that comes from there there okay see here that's the brow all the lines coming out here the lines coming down into the cheek like i just showed you and going away so it's almost like uh if a fist right here's your fist was holding a piece of material right let's just say here's a piece of material and there's your piece of material like that. Every line and crease in that piece of material is put under stress and pressure because here it's being grasped together. So it creates a point where each line comes out of, like that, see? So you have it like that, like that, like that, okay? That's what's happening on these crease points. If you have an eye like that, and you have a crease point like that, crease point like that, crease point like that, crease point like that, see how in here, that's like this. It's a point, they call it a point of pull, I think, in uh, fabric and clothing drawing books, right? If you I think Hogarth's book on how to draw drapery and stuff like that, I think it called, it's called a point of pull because it's where, if you have a point where it's anchored, so if you have the, an anchor, right there, that's just my little anchor, and a, a rope is tied to it, another rope is tied to it, another rope is tied to it, right? That's the point at which tension is put on that rope. So it's called a point of pull. And the same here on this eye, where you've got up here an eye, and then you've got this point here where the point of pull or the little anchor is here at the edge of the eye, where the brow comes up. And so there's one crease, there's another crease, there's another crease, there's another crease. So if you remember that you're trying to draw things from out at a point, it'll make it look right. Uh, if you Try and draw it like this. Here's his eye. There's that. There's that. There's that. There's that. There's that. And they're kind of not related. And then you start doing this sort of stuff. It's not going to look bad, but it's not going to look right. Right? Compare that to 
if I draw an eye here, and then have a point there, point there, point there, point there like that, and then maybe have a few normal ones like that. And then I go and do his style. And then just render that down. See how much more that looks like how he draws. Now, so remember that, the point of pull or the anchor point, anchor point probably sounds better as far as I'm concerned. So let's call it an anchor point. Like that, right? There's your anchor. And then you've got everything is tied to it just in here. That's your anchor point, okay? Same with the cheek. If you have an eye here and you have the cheek coming off the side, which he often does, right here, that's your anchor point. So now you can put in your dark point, what the light can't get to. You can do your underlighting. You can start doing your above lighting and see how that starts to look like there's the eye that starts to look like how he renders things. Okay. I'm already sensing this episode is going to be longer than other episodes. So bear with me. Stick with me till the end. Putting all that together, what does it look like to draw a Stephen Platt face? Well, it's going to take time. But if I do a rough outline like this, Okay, I'll put in my eyes. Now eyebrows, I, I meant to talk about eyebrows. Steven has the most insane eyebrows in his characters. A, a lot of guys just draw like an eye and there's your eyebrow. That's not what he does. He gets detail into the eyebrow. So you draw an eye like that. He will do this sort of thing. And then he'll get all of this detail. Like each little section, each little hair, like that. And then obviously he'll have some lighting in there. Very, very fluffy eyebrows. Uh, not dissimilar to how Jim Lee drew Magneto's eyebrows in the first couple of issues of X-Men in the early 90s. So maybe that's where he's gotten it from. But if we're gonna do this, we'll just put these eyebrows up. That. And then we'll do the other one. Like that, very fluffy eyebrows which allows us some room to draw some line work in there. And now from our anchor point, we can start to do some of this, which remember goes all the way up. And then we've got coming down to here He always does dark around the eyes. Remember to roll off into the cheekbone down there. Now these things under here, I don't know the name of, but they're incredibly important. Quite a wide, flat chin, not a very pointy chin. These muscles here that wrap around the chin are a signature of Stevens because he always does the underlighting here to emphasize the macho nature of these guys. I enjoy using that word. I haven't used that word in many years. Okay, and then we can start to build that up or we can start to do some darkening there. Let's do this nose lighting because I thought that looked cool.
and then the upper lip. Okay, so we know the cheekbones there. We know that this is heading up into there. And that's going to come around like that. Never hurts to put some of these in a Stephen Platt drawing. Somehow just makes it feel more at home. All right, bring that down there. Obviously, we can start to render that cheek out a bit. Okay, under lighting. And yes, I'm just drawing this out of my mind. I'm not really copying anything at the moment. I'm just trying to apply the principles to show you guys you can actually draw from your mind if you apply the principles. What should we do for his... Uh, I can't put the face thing down, but let's have a look at that. That picture. Where was it? It was the first picture we had. Yeah, yeah. Prophet had a cool thing there. Let's try and do something like that, maybe. Uh, we'll finish up these though. We don't want to disappoint and not fill these in after talking about them for 10 minutes. Little trick, guys. Doesn't turn out perfect, but it's better than what I was doing. Use it, use it as a stencil and stick to the edge. All right, better. We apply the same rendering technique. We find that point there, and then we bring that out. It's a dark point. And we, I'm guessing, add in techie looking sort of things. And of course, we're not talking about hair today, but Prophet's hair. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then That's how I see a Stephen Platt face looking. That's how to draw Stephen Platt faces for now. If you want more on Stephen Platt faces, maybe something I didn't cover, just put it down and we might be able to do a part two. I will see you next Friday. Thanks for being with us, guys. All the best.